Introducing the new Footlong Sidekicks at Subway. Try the warm and delicious Footlong Cookie, Footlong Pretzel, or Footlong Churro. And we are here with a nice little interview with some family members that have, one of them at least, traveled a long way. I want to go ahead and give some introductions here. Who are you and what are you here for? My name is Yaman. I'm Sajid's brother, and I'm here to watch Sajid dominate and get another Penta. Let's go, let's go. Now, the other brother here, uh, coming a little bit of a long distance from San Francisco. Do you have any motivational words? Sajid, you're my goat and my mayor. So, Penta number three. <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much for joining. And thank you for showing some support to these players. We'll see you in the rift. Lovely. That was awesome. That was I didn't know we were going to do that. I didn't know, I don't know what the mayor story is. Yeah, does anyone I, know? We're going to need to learn the you lore know, on that one. I, I will say that Jinx is one of the CEOs of Challengers League, so that, that might have been it. You know, game be. one. Kind of that to that. Yeah. But I got to say, they're on the precipice of a 2-0. And I know a lot of folks showed up here to the NACL Finals. So first off, shout out to everybody in the crowd. Who wants a five-game series? Yeah. Come on, we need some energy for Maryville now. Hey, just as they have not shown up. Just as importantly, which one of you wants the bucket? No. <laughs> I've been told to cool it on the bucket. All right, all right, all right. We'll calm down on the bucket all a little right. bit. We got to talk up how Maryville is going to try and come back in this series. I said I thought they were favored to win this one. FlyQuest has been soundly proving me wrong so far, but crucially, both teams, as you've already called out, Cubby, neither team can play uh, Talia, neither team can play the Nautilus. Those are both characters that you really look to try and find some wins on. And Maryville back on the blue side, they're taking away some of these later game scaling, but they still need to try and find a brawler here in the top side for Niles. Yeah, I think that Niles Aatrox is something that I'm expecting. He's eight and two on the pick. And just thinking back to that series he had against Disguise, they wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Niles Aatrox in a couple of those games. All right, it's yeah. open. Yeah, it, it is open. The Varus is taken away. Also, Senna available. That is something that Scary Jerry has added to his arsenal later on in the split, but it is going to be a Karma game. Yeah, yeah, so we were talking about it. I know that the junglers on the desk were talking about it. Kindred Karma, strong combo, is on the table. But also the Karma, Zin's the other one. And Zin isn't available for Fly Seed of the Nine. So Maryville True. can take that for free. The effects of Fearless Draft coming in as we get later into the series. <laughs> I don't know if we're going to be getting Tarek this time around, Mr. Manwalers, but it is still something that we got to look at for the rest of it. Now, this is big. We are going to be seeing Sajed and time we've done this to this man. going through with Azaya and Rakan. This has been one of their best picks so far. Yeah, just stats on this pick throughout the entire split. 5-0 and oh on Zaya for, for Sajed. 7-0 oh. oh for Chime on the Rakan. So these picks have been wow. massive. But Maryville, they do have the chance to answer. I gotta say, Aphelios is up. There oh, it is. Oh, call, but no, we're picking okay. topside. Okay, the gauntlet's thrown. Niles locked in the blind Aatrox. Surdy, you have to pick Fiora. You gotta do it. That, <laughs> that was, was the, the gauntlet. Quick bet. That was the gauntlet. That was the bet. No, it's Jax. You gotta pick Jax. Jax, oh. Jax is way too good here. Now, I will say that the button picks, they're a little bit nerfed in Fearless because you only get one game and it might be a champ that like, takes up two rolls. This is a great game for them to use the Jax and it could legitimately go to Shaden in the jungle as the Jax in matchup, something that we've seen a lot, but also Surdy, he's been known for his Jax on the ladder forever. So this truly is a flex for FlyQuest going into the next phase. I also want to point out that with the Atrix and Fiora pick that we've been looking at a little bit, I got to say at my level, yeah, at Steve's level, it's a very Fiora favorite matchup. But as you get better and better, okay. Aatrox actually starts winning What are you trying this. to say about my level? Guys? I'm saying a lot of things about your level. You still <laughs> owe me quite a bit for that. But we are going to be looking at how well Maryville can do because Niles is so good at fighting his way into the back line with the Aatrox, because he is so good at creating threats on the back line. He is going to be creating so much pressure here for Maryville to just pull play through this fairly normal front to back style composition and the Zaya, while a very safe pick, is going to really have a lot of pressure put on. Oh man, that, that's a fun ban at the end, taking away the Cassiopeia. If that's like a surprise ban for you, Quad used to go by the IGN Sulka. He is an unbelievable oh. Cassiopeia player. Yeah. Stood for it. Solo Cassiopeia because it yeah. was his best pick. Yeah. You like the Yone. Yone yeah, locked locked in Hold on. This could go to yep. Surdy in the top side. Yone is a great pick. It's something we've seen be an answer into Karma. But Surdy specifically also loves this matchup in Aatrox. So things still flexible for FlyQuest going to pick five. I also like this Kaisa that we are hovering as well. You know that Maryville creates so many plasma stacks for Scary Jerry, and it is going to be locked oh, in right now. You, Maryville is so aggressive with this. You could read his lips too. That wasn't the most confident Scary Jerry. I was like, all right, lock me in the Kaisa. 
So that is what they're going to go for. Now, what is the support? Because we're assuming Karma mid. Well, you can't pick the Nautilus anymore. It's going to be Rel. Right. Yeah, Rel's the best thing available. I will say this is a flex between Yuji and Zyko as FlyQuest challengers. Again, I, I said they still have flexibility. It will be the Corky to answer the Karma. So very much a okay. scaling pick coming in. That does put the Yone top and the Jackson jungle. This creates a lot of pressure right now for Maribel to try and find answers to this composition. FlyQuest have fan fantastic scaling on their side and Maryville with this Xin Zhao, they need to make things happen relatively early on. We saw what happened when Shaden had this character. Yuji now needs to do it. I, <laughs> Double wants the bucket I still, still got it. Yeah, I mean, uh, they're, they're in high demand as you were giving you know, a couple on LCS I, yesterday. I could just put it up here behind us on the caster desk and look away. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's not my response. If I don't see it, you know, <laughs> object permanence is something that Josh talks about a lot. So we, yeah. we love yeah. we love that. It's something that play. you That's always got to go through. I do love it. Uh oh, someone they're coming. We see people looking no, for them. Again, I've been way. told. I've been told these are valuable. Valuable. Riot Games logo. You know, protect the IP. Protect it. Yeah. Unfortunately, no Lightning McQueen coming through on this one either. But it is. I think crazy. they were trying to also spot if anybody took it because then they'd be able to track them <laughs> down. That's likely. No yeah. object permanence. Don't worry about it. Object permanence. Well, now we got to see how permanently Maryville is going to be in this series because they are up against <laughs> the wall in game three. They have a composition, but they they can play their normal style of trying to blow open the early game, and it needs to work now, or their season is over. And I, I gotta say that poor Maryville, like, this is what I like to call a smart comp, right? It is just push forward, <laughs> win fast. Yeah? yeah? No, we're gonna win very fast, okay. right? Uh, that's what you have to do with the Karma's in, is to keep on pushing forward. Yeah. I think that on the side of FlyQuest, it's gonna be a little bit more about controlling the map early. Zaya's gonna be good into everyone that is diving, but I don't love the straight up 5v5 team fight for them. They're gonna need to find poke and find Surdy opening up in sides to have advantages in this game. FlyQuest challengers loading in to game three are two and zero in the series. One game away from being oh, your champions, Maryville this is University. So backs against the wall and Niles in a 1v5 to kick things off. They were waiting to see if he was gonna dance party with them. That oh, is so rude oh, oh, oh. coming through from the side of FlyQuest, but hey, you gotta respect it. Do you? I don't no, respect it. I don't respect it. If they wanted to dance, let them dance. Actually, so that's kind of cute from Shime. He hid the fact that he dropped a ward there. He dropped it over the wall. The Niles at least would have seen it, known they have info. Instead, uh, Chime dropping an early ward, 430 in the top lane. And I got to say, so uh, I, I got the privilege. Shout out to Rocco. Let me sit in on the scrims of YC during the week. Uh, and I got to see Surdy playing this matchup against Castle's Aatrox. Castle oh. was widely considered the best Aatrox, or one of the best Aatrox we have in LCS. Yeah. And I was talking to Surdy about it. He's like, dude, that was so fun playing against Castle's Aatrox. If I can play Yone and do okay against that, I feel like I can take Niles Aatrox like it's nothing. So we'll see if Surdy has that today. And this has been one of Niles most impactful champs. We talked about that throughout the series. It's a big deal that he was able to get it in this game three. But as you were both alluding to, you got to win early with this Maryville composition because the Xin Zhao, the Karma, they will fall off if you're not able to kind of get them steamrolling. I'm going to give a shout out to someone who is not able to make it today and make sure that you know here, Steve, that Maryville is playing the beatdown. They are the composition. They're the ones who need to set the tempo relatively early on. And the fact that Yuji starting with the Wolves and the Grop, not necessarily going to try to find something early and he will be warded out if he wants to try and make something happen. Yeah, and Yuji is actually pathing to take some of the uh, smaller camps first, setting up the respawn and a potential early uh, grub take. As I, I, I will say that uh, this is something that can be contested. It's interesting to see Shaden as well. He's doing the three camps very quickly in the top side to maybe impact top two. They would spot Yuji walking up, so that ward from Chime level one, as you highlighted, Josh, really paying dividends for Surdy, enabling him to play out this matchup the way that he knows he has to play it out. Yeah, and Yuji, as he crashes down to the other side of the map, is going to be matched by Shaden. Nothing really happening early on, but one of the things that we've oftentimes looked at with this Karma plus the Zinjiao composition is how powerful it will be against double or triple range compositions like FlyQuest actually have right now. And so, we're actually seeing Yuji with the lack of priority in the mid lane, but priority coming in from his bottom side, going for an invade. Oh, this is oh, a bold one. Barely. Sees him now, so both junglers know what is going on, but the important thing is Maribel have to push bot, so Zyko's in the back pocket of Yuji, meaning it could be a smite fight if Shaden wants to go for the 50-50 here. Oh! oh! He got it! Okay. I think Yuji just smited early. It went down to like five health or something there. That, that's brutal. The fact that Shaden was able to get it. Just an early smite. We have been seeing some nerves coming out from our most valuable prospect. That's probably a double crab too. As uh, the 
I, I think that Yuji, I mean, Shaden did smite, right? So Yuji will be able to at least get this crab and should be able to pressure the top side. As I, I really like how Yuji's playing this, push this one up top as we have a three cancel of Fox. Jed's got three. Yeah, Ouch. Zyra Khan, very powerful in the 2v2. Flash away from Zyko. So Jed wants oh. it. First blood to the rookie. This is a lane. This was supposed to be Maryville's style of game. They invade with Yuji early on. They dominate the bottom side. And so Jed, I thought he had a weak laning phase. He is taking the best bot lane in the entire league to task. I mean, what a debut on stage from Sajad. It was a panic kill game one. The Ziggs, we haven't seen him play at all split in game two. Looks like he was a veteran on that pick. And now, early solo kill in the 2v2 for Sajad against Scary Jerry and Psycho. They're able to get that wave in. Going to be a great base for Sajad. And he's off to the races already. Look, I've been saying this. A lot of people have been saying this online. You look at that last LCS Finals. There were four exciting prospects that had come from NACL in that. And I think it's ignited a passion in some of these younger players as we get another look at Sajed here. Just absolutely pop off. Chime setting up. Sajed knocking him down. And I gotta say, we have to compare the two players who have been playing on stage for their first time. This is Yuji's first visit to the stage. This is Sajed's first time on the stage. And one of them has looked good in three games straight. But Yuji, his first play in game one, didn't go his way. This last play that just started off this game, not going his way. Someone is having so much more comfortability with their first time here, and it is the FlyQuest AD carry. And it's wild to think that Yuji, this is actually his first time on the stage, considering how long he's been playing in the league. He's been in three out of four splits for most valuable prospect top five conversation. He was sixth in the one split that he wasn't there. As we get another look here at oh. the, the replay. Okay, so how low does it, it down to five? It was down to five. Wow. And then just a clean escape immediately after that. But we get to see after all the play goes through, we have another bit of a scuff on the top side for these grubs. The first one has already gone over to Maryville. And for me, Yuji was kind of sitting, setting up for this, taking those AOE topside camps first to maybe try and sneak a level five before the grubs. Shaden's able to get there and pressure. And now Shaden will get jumped on, but that's when the counter strike comes out. Yeah, counter top side. Sorty Fade steal. Sorty's in there. Yuji's got to flash away. Got the Karma Shield. Flash forward from Shaden. Get the double knock up. With the help of Surdy, it's a one-for-one one trade. It ends up being all right. Niles walks away with a red buff off of that, and still just one grub taken here for Maryville. But Spyrax saving up a lot of pressure in the mid lane. Quad is quietly two waves up already in just the 1v1 going into Spyrax. And that has been, again, something that we've looked at in game two. We saw that Quad was having a good time, but it was with support of his jungler. Now he's able to do it all alone, and Spyrax has already talked about how tough it'll be from here. As we even get the shove in for Subjed bot side, gonna be caught by Scary Jerry, but Shaden's also in the area. We didn't get all the uh, Void Grubs, important to note, only one picked up. I, I do like the adjustment though that Shaden makes. His bot lane is so far ahead, they're gonna start taking these dragons on time. So it uh, looks like deep in the Grubs a bit. Shaden gonna shift down to the dragon. He could be and, in trouble. Yeah, Sturdy is in a tough spot here. Has flash available, he's gonna have to use it early and does get out. I mean, good respect coming through from Surdy, but at the same time, we got to look at the different lanes. This is two lanes now, both Quad and Surdy up a lot of CS because of how much Niles and Spyrex have tried to overforce priority. And honestly, I mean, I got to give so much props to Niles throughout this playoff run. I know that uh, last game, you know, it was really tough for Niles to play that one out as the Rumble. Really was attacked by FlyC, but this time he has his best, most played champion and really does have the chance to step up. And he kind of has to if Maryville wants to find themselves in a game four. The I think one of the kill on his team. I think in general, right? This needs to be a game for Maryville to come through. They have the Zinjo Karma. This is something we've said you need to find your wins on. They have Miles on the Atrex. You need to find your win on that. I mean, more than that, even just being down 0 2, if they don't win, they lose. Yeah, I was going to say, Josh, I think that's the bigger factor there. <laughs> but so even this still, is it if they lose this one. It, you need to have your comfort picks, right? We were no, talking no. so much about how the comfort for Maryville had been good. If they get later into the series, it will become better for them because they have so many more champions, but it feels as though the pressure has been put on too early. Nice word here uh, by MU to at least catch a potential roam. And here in the season, Psycho, body blocking Chime a bit. I don't think he's going to burn a W for that. <laughs> as Chime is trying to get frisky, maybe to wait at the base of Spyrax. It's not going to be the case. Uh, there was a dragon taken by Fly C, and this 1k gold lead for Fly C. The Yone, Corky are going to get so big as this game goes on. So the fact they have a dragon and this lead early, uh, that's really out kicking their coverage for what we expect with this competition. It was the kill for Sajed, yeah. but also mid lane farm as a 1v1 from Surdy and Niles. Face Sealed used. World Breaker not. Niles still under the turret, still fine, but Surdy trading so aggressive. Not I hate giving this Niles any. <laughs> 
any chance. I do too. Respite. Respite ban him so much time. Yeah. Yep. Going Meanwhile. to dive. Ultimate pop from the Aatrox now. Trying to life steal through this. And Chime takes two turret shots. Does never mind. I mean, the fact that you get the ultimate, though, is huge. The fact that FlyQuest pull away from the play, seeing that Maryville is already ready for the counter gank, is a huge play from FlyQuest. They know they don't need to make plays yet. I, I, I will say that's good defense by Niles to get out of that. Like, I, and I think that Niles is actually in a decent spot in this lane. He pulled it, so because FlyQuest played for that dragon, Surdy actually lost his flash and a lot of XP off that visit from Yuji. And that's kind of what has Niles, that small lead now. Surdy not able to recall quite yet, and Psycho. Sitting on a control ward, so still seeing if anyone wants to really mess with Niles in this top side as he's trying to get this wave in. Oh, I wonder if they go for their own dive. I mean, doesn't have ult, doesn't have flash, and Yuji's in the area. Surdy okay. in trouble right now, trying to clear out the wave as fast as he can. Not able to get there. And now, turret's gonna start hitting Zyko. Surdy, how can he try and outplay this? There's just no chance. Yuji picks up the kill. Great play coming through from Maribel there, indexing towards the top side. This has been the plan from Flyquist, but the seesaw swings back. Jaden has flash available. Scary Jerry uses a very early ultimate there. And they go back in under the turret. Shaden. Oh. Getting some head games going on Scary Jerry. It is traded back though. Scary at least picks up a kill on Chime. That was a nice W flash from Scary Jerry to make sure that he got one back. I do still want to give credit though to Niles. He's really beating Surdy at his own game. Surdy got to pick this matchup. He loves this matchup. I remember watching Surdy play this back when I was a coach for Team Liquid in one of their combines to try out for their academy team. He was smashing everyone, playing Yone into Aatrox. Now he's actually able to play defense against this, calling resources to him. Again, kind of beating Surdy at his own game. Flip side, Scary Jerry at least gets something back. So things not too bad for Maryville. It could be way worse. They're actually playing out okay. I mean, at this point, you got to expect they're going to send resources up to gank Niles' lane with how the first two games have gone. So Maryville pivoting a little bit in their style and their play. Early on in the year, we saw them heavily play the bot side, reminiscent of that in the first couple of games. But now it's been, hey, protect Niles and more importantly, also try and get Yuji ahead here doing an all right job so far. One of the things we've heard from Miles in the past, I'm trying to remember, I believe it was up against Team Liquid Challenge, was saying, hey, give me these bands, give me these matchups, and I will deliver. But at the same time, if we take another look at this replay, I actually really impressed from Shaden and Chime just going right on back in. I would have been full, but Scary Jerry was not. He was able to get in, and the turret shot finds him the counter kill. But still, a lot of pressure coming from FlyQuest because the seesaw on both sides of the map is continuing to swing. And I actually want to see that swing back bot. Now Scary Jerry did burn both summoners to find that kill. I think getting that gold in his pocket was good, but this opens up a window for Flying Quest Challengers to not only pressure him in the bot side, but also Drake spawning soon. Should be able to add that one to their tally and really make this a clean early game. Meanwhile, Sajed still has both summoner spells available plus the yeah. ultimate. So in a very good spot right now. Fun camera angle as we see Yuji taking away these grubs. This Grab could be the fifth grub plus six if it's not contested. And so far, it doesn't look like FlyQuest challengers are walking up to that area. Shaden and Shime are hovering mid. Spyrex has flash, so shouldn't be in too much danger. It's a package for Quad and props to Spyrex for hovering the correct side. If he hovers bot, he could be under threat. Uh, uh, FlyQuest, that's their strong side instead. Hovers top, wasted package for Quad. And FlyQuest Challenger is kind of waiting for this dragon to spawn to take it. They should be able to get it, but at least Maryville is somewhat ahead on the play. I actually like that package usage. Yeah. Usage, because it does guarantee that he will yeah. have it yeah. ready for the next yeah. dragon, and I he think will have the window. It was a read that Yuji was not on that side of the map. Yeah. It's not going to be a contested dragon, but they wait to start it up. So Yuji is actually here yeah. now. Back to the top side. Quad. Can he push off Yuji from the dragon? It I, looks like they're wasting his time. Yeah, I don't think this is doable for Maryville. I mean, I, their comp kind of wants to fight right now, but given what the lane states are, Maryville don't have any yeah. opportunity to. So FlyQuest set that up correctly and dodge out on what should be a good power window for Maryville. I think a big part yeah. of that, I mean, it's weird to see the Xin Zhao Karma comp not try and push somebody off of the dragon. Yeah. But Scare Jerry didn't have flash from the earlier play. So when you don't have the summer spells on your ready to carry, it's so much harder to pull that off. That and also if you get Zaya to crack an early the way that Sajet is, is just how that interacts with the Zaya W that attack speed steroid. Zaya does really win this match at this point. So uh, again, props to FlyQuest Challengers. I mean, they set the map up brilliantly there and uh, two Drakes into the Zen Karma comp. It really is going to be, I think, still on Niles and pressuring this top side for Maryville to find a foothold in this game. I think for the first time, I'm getting shades of what Maryville looked like last split when they were not one of our better teams. And one of the things that they would do is they would consistently give up a lot of CS in order to try and find fights. This time they give up CS, but they don't even try and find the fight. It just means that they're going to be falling a little bit further behind. And when you have a control deck going into a beatdown deck, like what, what do you do? You don't have a lot of tools at some point. 
Maryville is going to be forced to shove all in. Okay, they're all in Niles right now under the turret. Has flash available. Trying to drain tank wow. through it. Doesn't get a chance to use it. He's down. And uh, Zyko again is trying his best to read the play, but Chime, because of that bot lane prio, first there, goes through the lane because Surti's able to push. And the way that Chime is playing around this top side, like, again, Zyko's trying his best to answer, just can't do it given the prio that FlyC has and Maryville continue to lose more resources. Spyrax also in trouble here. Chime just immediately into the mid lane. As Jed was also looking for something. Maryville University have not found purchase in this must win game. If they lose here, that's the season. Scared Jared Jeff on the Sajed though. Almost takes him down. Didn't even use the ultimate. It looks like he just caught Sajed walking through the river. One of the things that we've, I've always looked at Scary Jerry and had a lot of respect for is how willing he is to go take these 1v1 yeah. duels on the bottom side. Whenever you have both supports leaving the lane, Scary Jerry is the player who finds solo kills down here. But part of the reason why he hasn't is how do you aggress on Dazara? He just ults and is like, oh, darn, well, your Q doesn't do any damage. I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to trade right on back. Scary Jerry needs to find something, and I don't think he can. Yeah, let's we'll see if anything happens in the bot lane as the Heralds also started up. But as I was saying, Maryville... They got to find something big here because their comp is going to be falling behind as they have already found themselves behind in this series. The first ever collegiate team to make it this far and Scary Jerry's trying to make something happen in the 2v2 bot side. Instant cleanse flash from Chimes Engage, but now down summoner spells yet again, down ult yet again. Doesn't find a kill this time. You can really see Maryville pushing again, just any advantage they can try and find. And as this game goes on, the Aatrox and the Karma for me will lose on both side lanes, regardless of matchup, to the solo laners of FlyQuest. Uh, it's gonna be so tough. And oh. now, here comes no Shaden. Scary Jerry walks forward with Zyko. They thought maybe they had a pick on the Chime, but Shaden was there and FlyQuest punished. Whenever I watch this, I always think back to poker, right? You you cannot afford to be putting out these big blinds and saying like, oh, well, I guess I'll lose that. You can't afford to call at all. You have to try and find your own to all in. And Maryville, they've tried to do a top lane. They've tried to find a couple opportunities to do it, but they're just getting nickel and dime. They're grinding around on, going to run out of chips fast. And Maryville, they need to find that opportunity. And I want to see it happen around Niles in the top side. And I, I mean, for me, the big difference still is Shaden, right? He was the one that was attacked early on. He's mm -hmm. sitting at four and one. We've seen how crazy Jax can get throughout oh. LCS playoffs. And yeah, Scary Jerry, like he went for that all in, but he traded two sums for one against Chime. Now being sumless, easy find for Shaden the Chime. Get another kill over to their Jax. And now look at Jax's items so far. This champ scales incredibly well as the game goes on. Trinity Force and change to boot. It's going to be so tough to move him. Yep, Shaden 4, 1, and 0 with the Trinity Force working on that second item. Looking like a porcupine in a petting zoo. Nobody wants to touch him right now on the side of Maryville, and uh, it's going to be tough for him going forward. I know, I'm ready to call this one. I'm a death, 605. Ooh, I, it's looking really, what? really rough. They're going on to Chime right now. He doesn't have Flash in the earlier play, but he can just battle Lance right out of there. Grand yeah. entrance over the wall. He's safe. What's the phrase here, Cubby? Done and dusted? Yeah. Yeah, Done this is dusted. looking like an incredibly dominant season from wow. FlyQuest Challengers. Yeah. They end up 8-1 and one during the regular season. They only dropped a single series to Supernova. They beat Maryville during the regular season as well, 2-1. to one. They went through the upper bracket. They had a couple of close-ish series, but they never really were under threat of even dropping to the lower bracket. And the Drift Herald goes through. Now the engage from Zyko again on the Chime. He's trying to get out of there. Full commit from MU, but they just don't have the firepower to get the damage. Quad with a package over. Flash from Spyrax. That now was the all-in. That was the all-in. You have no chips left. This is it. You have to try and find something even further. You have to force I think they even harder. Zyko's got Flash. He's probably calling for it, saying, oh. speed me up. But FlyQuest, they're reading it, and they're not giving the engage to Maryville. And there's no teleport wards here for Niles. The only thing close to that is the ward in the tri on the bottom side. Maryville have to fight this dragon. Zyko stuns up Surdy as FlyQuest challengers. They're walking up to get the vision down. Niles is going to be looking Man. for a teleport flank and think about how Maryville have gotten so many of their wins. It's been off of Niles finding the big play, finding the big TP flank. Qu Quad's just able to stack up more rockets because MU's not forcing the objective at all. Uh, it, you kind of have to eat the rockets with karma shields and uh, like with Quad just able to get more. There, there's there's no play here for Maryville. Niles, he's just oh, based. He's, he's going to walk in. 
Daiko could be in trouble. Trimes looking for the engage himself. Oh. Gets under two. Oh. Follow up from Shaden and a double kill to Quad. FlyQuest challenger is easy fight before the dragon. Speaking of a bluff, Chime acts like he's going to Zyko and then finds two later on. The perfect follow up from Shaden. Third Drake, soul point secured for FlyC on time. And look like they're going to get all of us out of here on time with a 3 0. Ooh, Niles having some fun with this one in a 1v3. Flashes away. Dodging out on all of the poke from Quad, but not finding anything there. Looks clean onto Sajed, gets the ult and the ghost, but not much more. And the fact that they're getting a turret and the dragon off of this yeah. really seals the deal here for me. We already talked about during draft, FlyQuest Challengers is outscaling in this. Maryville never got anything off the ground. They tried to send a lot of things towards the top side. They tried to upset things, but as this bluff comes through, like yeah. all Chime looking at Zyke, they're like, no, nope, I actually won. Yeah. Spyrex, everybody jumps right on top, and Spyrex does not have a chance to do anything. That's so clever from Chime. And I, Chime, he was our first team all support. He has been so fantastic all the time. <laughs> Even the coach thought we get there, like, ooh, that was yeah. nice. Yep. And a reminder that this team, the ceiling is so high. Expectations also high. Surdy and Shaden, rumors of them getting starting LCS spots, but then team or the league limits to eight teams. Chime had a spot. Team limits to eight teams. Or the league, again, limits to eight teams. A lot of these players we know can play at that top level. Quad comes in, smashes the league as well. And Sajed, the rookie, having an incredible split. This team ceiling is so incredibly high. And, you know, with uh, some of the rumors flying around, we might even get to see them take out some teams outside the league. Who knows? As we move into summer, you know, it could be something that's pretty fun. This is a roster that could do pretty well if it sticks together and isn't picked apart by some of the LCS teams that, I, I mean, again, I feel like the talent is here. All right, last right chance. Now, they're getting engaged on by Zyko. Maryville really do need to find some miracle now. The Saints will pray, but so far unanswered as FlyQuest challengers absorb the initial engage. That was ult from Zyko. Maryville do not have the Gravity Storm anymore, and they're just getting peppered by the poke here. Quad landing everything. Yeah, Moiden and Scorky, you get to force everyone off if you have rockets available, and you can see Quad just doing his best to pepper, prepped another big one. In the arsenal and this tower even being at half you gotta believe uh, threat to fall 20 minutes wow. 30 seconds on the clock and they're 7k ahead pushing on tier 2 turrets flyquest challengers have controlled this game beautifully controlled this series incredibly and they are not giving maryville any room to breathe and i want to go back to something sturdy told us in week two of the regular season. We had a chance to talk to him and he gave us some very clear words and he was saying, look, if FlyQuest challengers do not win, do not comfortably win the entire league, they'll be an embarrassment considering how strong this team is supposed to be. And they are living up to those words. The yeah. fact that they are all the way here, upper bracket, taking what's looking to be a 3-0 off of this means that FlyQuest, I mean, they talk big, but they're willing to back it up unlike <laughs> and I mean, props to Maryville University. The Maryville Saints came into this tournament. We didn't know where to place them in power rankings. This roster played incredibly well, second of the regular season. A miracle run through the lower bracket, if we want to call it that, even though they were considered one of the teams that should make a run for the finals. But they had to work hard to get to this stage, to get to this moment. The FlyQuest, they just seem insurmountable right now. Yeah, and the last team that we saw 3-0 finals would have been that TOA squad that was so dominant featuring Armeo, Yawn, Ayla, Harry, and Bradley to boot. So, yeah. Uh, uh, I, yeah. A couple of those names I, I think I've seen on the LCS stage. Yeah, uh, not not too bad up there. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I was I was expecting a Fly C <laughs> oh, to be shit. favored, but I wasn't expecting anything as one-sided as this. And Fly C, again, looking to put the finishing touches on. I will say that with this comp, and this lead, no need to threaten Baron. Just gonna kind of fix our side lanes and play for this mountain storm. The Surtees splitting into the side lane. What do? What do? Like, yeah. what, what do you do what? in this position? I, as somebody, you guys never played at this level, but I love to play in all of my little rec leagues. And whenever you're in this kind of position, the big thing is you need somebody to still talk. Right, when people stop talking, the game is over. And the person who's always been good at that for Niles, he says, Jerry, just listen yeah. to my voice. We heard in an interview him say those words. He said it though. Hey, Jerry, after 30 minutes, just listen to my voice. <laughs> Seven more I gotta minutes. Say, they, gotta, <laughs> they gotta find a way to make this game last a little bit longer. Uh, if they wanna get to that game uh, plan, as Zyko uh, might get caught out right here. Shaden's in there, lands a stun. Quad's got so much oh, damage over shot. the wall. Oh, and Chime, Chime with the follow-up engage. Sajed in trouble, though. Has the ultimate still available. Has some dispels still available. Nobody can get onto the rookie AD carry. And Jax. he can unleash. Double kill to Shaden. FlyQuest challengers can do no wrong. And they will clean up Maryville in the fight.
A smite's on the table, but no flash on Yuji. They feel like that's enough to start Baron, and I agree as this Jax continues to get as out of control as the game is in favor of FlyQuest Challengers. Okay, oh. Surdy, having some fun with it now. 1v1, it's Scary Jerry, and he will get it! And it doesn't matter, he just takes like six turret shots at the same time. I, I am so impressed with Chime in particular this game. That's the second time he's had a huge predict, the second time he's showcased why this Rakan is already 7-0 this season. Yeah. Going for Zyko and then changing his target. That time predicting multiple escape kills coming out from Maryville and absolutely crushing the game. It's plays like that. You're like, these guys should be in LCS, <laughs> <laughs> right? Like. Realistically, good players like Chai, no, players no. like Surdy, players like Shaden, Quad and Sajet have an incredible showings as well. They're making arguments on this stage. This is where you need to show up. Grand Finals of the NACL, if you can do this to your opposition, the number two team throughout the entire split, that is evidence that you are ready for that next jump and to compete at a higher level. I also want to point out how young some of these players are, right? Sajed, just 19 years old and already looking like this. We've seen other players like this in the past that have looked so, so bright. And we know that FlyQuest challenges. It's almost like this game almost feels, I don't want to say boring, but it's almost super quiet because isn't, they haven't need to do anything cool. Isn't JoJo Pion 19? Is he? I believe so. Uh, maybe now. I think so. Yeah. All right, so Sajed, Jojo, Pion, same player? Oh, okay. Well, uh, let's you know, not get too far. Maybe, maybe <laughs> we're having too much fun with it. FlyQuest Challengers having a lot of fun with this game, though. As it's 25 minutes in, they got the Dragon Soul. They can just look at anything on the Rift. The oh, Maryville Saints in. will need a miracle to come back in this one, and it doesn't look like FlyQuest are interested in giving them that chance. The Siege will begin. It doesn't look like the Saints will be marching on after this one as the Siege comes through. This has to work. Yuji trying to find something, but now they have even uh, less engaged tools than they did last game. We were looking at the flash coming through from Yuji. Doesn't have an opportunity there. Zyko has no flash either. Where is the engage coming from? There is one ward that now is going to go to. I mean, th this is where the Corky just takes over too. And, and Quad, so not concerned about this game. He's going third item GA, not even stopping for right. Spirit Sojin or anything else. He knows that, you know, he can really throw himself in there. As We're heading in now. Zyko. Final engage from Zyko. Oh, can Scary Jerry make a miracle happen? It doesn't look like it's a Jet. Untouched Scary Jerry to the back line. The Jet takes him down. Double kill to the rookie of the split. And FlyQuest challengers have done it with wings spread wide. They'll make Saints bow. A roster that begs the question, how high can they soar? Niles will try and hold the line, but there's just no chance. FlyQuest challengers are your 2024 Spring Split champions. Wow, what a statement coming through from the FlyQuest Challengers roster. Surdy has said so many times, these guys are the real deal. He said he's not even the best player in the league. He said Quad was. You can see the faces on the far side. I mean, those games were kind of so one-sided that this doesn't even feel too exciting for FlyQuest Challengers. Yeah. I, they really showed up today. And for a team that just met yesterday to do this on stage, massive from them. You know who it does feel exciting for, though? I'm gonna call him out again. Got a Penta kill in game one. Incredible team fighting throughout the series. The rookie, Sajed, his family's here supporting him. What a first showing on his first games on this stage ever. It only took three as FlyQuest challengers earn a swift NACL championship. They're looking good, man. I don't really know what more to say about it. This team, they play against LCS squads all the time in their scrims. We are seeing already that they could potentially get there very soon. And as they're getting ready to get their awards, their lock has come through. These guys are the real deal. Yeah, I'm almost disappointed to see these guys play together again next split. I, I mean, I, I feel like they're they're bound for greater things. This could be the start for a couple of them. And also getting back on the road to success for a couple others on this yeah. team as really, again, the path to pro, sometimes it can be jumbled, sometimes you find yourself back at path, or at LCS, but the best thing you can do, continue to play well and keep on winning. And I think regardless of where these guys came from, they sure as hell did that today. And that's the reality of the league that we cover. The NACL is the Challengers League. The aspirations of these players is to push beyond, to push farther. And we can see, again, the evidence. They feel they're ready. They dismantled 
Maryville University, and this was not even a close last fight. It was not, and one of the major things we always have to look at is that three of these players have played on this stage before. Two of them played on this stage for the first time, and it won't be the last for so many of them from this point forward. I, yep. I can't wait to see what they're going to be doing next. Again, we talked about almost everyone, Surti, Shaden, they should be next in line. We should be looking at them to get a spot <laughs> as soon as possible. I didn't notice that. That was great. I, I was waiting for you. Know, <laughs> yeah. It's usual. Out the guns. So. <laughs> so Jin's covering them up. He's a little more modest about that. <laughs> yeah, I but mean, try and props to the players, though. It was a fantastic split. There's a reason that they were favorites coming in. There's a reason so many predicted them to take the title. And I mean, for players like Surdy as well, he was on that stage last summer, wasn't able to get across that line. And this time around yeah. with a different squad is able to pull it off. And players like Surdy have been for so long in that running, trying to prove that he's ready for that LCS spot. I mean, he, he was 5 vote for most valuable prospect. Oh, I'll, I'll oh, throw yeah, that one out there. Throw that in again. Just throw that one out there. I, didn't, All right. uh, I mean, honestly, I, I think that this is just a, a full team effort. I, I was so impressed with how well Shaden Quad and Shaden Chime were able to sync up throughout these maps. I, it, it just felt like once FlyQuest got control, they never let up in all three games. And yeah. it's something that was a really clinical and impressive with these guys. Well, with all that being said, we're joining Mazel and FlyQuest Challengers on stage for an interview. Welcome, everyone, with our victorious FlyQuest. I'm going to talk to you guys one by one, if you don't mind. I know you guys have some shiny hardware on your necks, but Chime, if you want to come up first and join me up here. My friend, it feels like it's been a long journey. It feels like you're back in an ACL just to dominate the league. you got to tell me what this feels like to reach that precipice that maybe you didn't reach before in an ACL. Should I hold this or just go yeah, like this? Okay. Um, I think, yeah, my stint in, or in LCS, I never really won um, that much. So I guess achieving this feels really nice because, you know, even though I played LCS for a while, um, I never won an ACL in my time in it. So it feels good to, like, prove that. Yeah, I like that. Uh, now I do want to go ahead and grab Sajed here next as our rookie of the split. My man <laughs> had a pentakill to kick it off as well. I just got to get your joyous occasion moment, uh, especially any words to your family, anything like that. Yeah, uh, shout out my mom, shout out my two brothers over there in the crowd. Yeah. They were looking for another Penta, just saying. Uh, I mean, one is enough. <laughs> <laughs> one Penta is just enough for the Humble King. Thank you so much. I'll go ahead and bring Quad up here next. My man, you had such a stable performance today. What are some words maybe to the LCS orgs that you'd like to say? Oh, <laughs> oh, that's, oh, oh I don't understand your name, but... What does it feel like to win? Uh, to win, oh, but so today is so easy to take win. So I wanna, easy. yes, I wanna uh, show more champ, but easy is so close. I like it. Do you like the medallion crown your neck? Yes, good. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I'll go ahead and bring up Surdy next, if you don't mind, my friend. We'll be saving the best for last here for Shaden. Surdy. You had a lot of confident words coming in tonight. You showed up big. What does it feel like to represent something that you've known yourself for so long as a top lane? I mean, I would have loved that the series was more about me, but at the end of the day, my team just smashed them, so I didn't really have to do much. Makes it easy, I guess, when you have good stars around you. Now I want to go ahead and bring up the last but not least, our king of the finals, the most valuable player of the series. You want to come up here and give a, a nice little speech because... It has been a journey of growth for you, Shaden. Uh, I think we all expected you to be in LCS. Here you are claiming a title in NACL. What does that mean to you? Well, it feels good. I don't know. Yeah, does it? All right, I like it. Hey, easy does it. <laughs> I do have one more question for you. Do you have any thoughts on your personal growth as a player? This split, do you feel like you really succeeded in anything personally? No, not really. My, my team is just good. I don't know. <laughs> Well, let's give it up for our king of the finals, Shaden for FlyQuest Challengers. And congratulations to the team as a whole. I hope you guys find good places for those medallions. Thank you all so much. And we're going to send it to the lounge to finish off everything. We'll see you there.
Thank you very much, Mazel. Man, a few words. That's Shaden. Yeah. Shaden, he, he said two things. Very, very <laughs> good. I mean, like, don't have to talk much when you have you know the gameplay to back it up. You know. Yeah, yeah. That's I think true. very deep. So let's start talking about it then. I'm happy we've had the two of you on to give your thoughts on the series oh, so yeah. far. But a 3-0, I did not expect that. I didn't give my prediction. I put it with my heart. I thought Maryville had a chance. Nah, I it didn't really show up though. I mean, I put three one. I, I had okay. a good feeling Fly was winning. I mean, I mean, Mazel and Chad, you guys, you guys put three two. I was like, no, Fly is gonna win. I didn't think they'd win this hard. Like, end of the game, ten k gold up or twelve k gold, something crazy. Yeah. I didn't expect that at all. Yeah, I mean, FlyQuest, they came to win. You could tell they really um, were prepared. They weren't stuttering. They didn't like. They weren't confused. They knew exactly what they wanted to do. Yeah. And they did it. And I think they had a. They just had a better game plan going into today. And I, a big part that we were talking about was the first time some of these players have been on this stage. Oh, yeah. It was UG's first time. I mean, it's crazy to think about that. First time we've seen UG actually on that stage after he's had so many like top eight, top four finishes in uh, Proving Grounds and ACLs. Do you guys remember your first games on stage? Because it felt a little bit from an outside perspective that maybe this wasn't the Yuji that we had seen all split on stage today. You know, my first time, it, it, it's a, the first game especially, you feel kind of uh, nervous. It's, it's just so much yeah. nerves. It's so scary. It's like, it's a, it's a different experience. And also for the entire team, not just Yuji, but like, um, it, just, it just feels like they're, like, like to them being together on a stage is a bit different from being in your own comfort room at, yeah. at Maryville. I feel like it's, I feel like it's a bit different. But whereas I feel like Fly, they have to like overcome in a sense of being remote and together. So I, I just feel like they adapted to the situation a bit quicker than MU. Mm -hmm. I mean, props to FlyQuest Challengers. This was the first time that they've met as a team. Uh, exactly. That's, Today. That's crazy. Yeah. Or yeah. I guess this weekend. <laughs> yeah. But also yeah. the first time playing stage games together as oh, a squad. Yeah. I want to talk about Sajed. Chad, I want to get your thoughts first. The rookie showed up. Yeah. No, I think uh, Sajed really, like, proved that he's the best or one of the best AD carries in the league. I think he, uh, yeah. as the rookie, he showed up and... Uh, Early in the split, he had problems maybe in the early game. Maybe he fell a little behind early in the split. But today, that did not happen. He yeah. was winning lane. He was getting advantages in lane. He was, honestly, he dominated his weakest point previously as a player. And he, a player who's good at team fighting and is bad at laning, who becomes great at laning, becomes a great player. I'm so happy you bring that part up because it was that third game when he's able to get that first blood. I was like, oh, this is over, right? I mean, now that Sajed's in his comfort zone, we know what he can do in team fights when he has a slower early game. But if he's able to do this in laning phase, it's incredible. We see him on your screen right now. The uh, MVP for the finals, Shaden. Uh, you're both junglers. What do you think of Shaden's performance? Uh, deserved? I would say deserved. Uh, absolutely deserved. You know, no, no, no questions asked. It's okay. Shaden. How yeah. hard is it to play against this guy? Because both of you had that chance. Chad, I want to hear from you first as we get a couple of replays from the series. I think uh, only a true jungler can really appreciate how he plays. He's not the flashy player he used to be. A lot of times when Shaden dominates the game, it's by hovering in fog. It's by being like, you don't know where he is because he's always in the fog of war. He's yeah. he's pressuring lanes that don't have flash. He's just everywhere, to be honest. And I think that uh, in this game, he he proved that he was aggressively, he was fighting, he, he got invaded early and he didn't let it, he made sure it didn't put him behind. And he just was playing aggressive. Yeah, I, I, I would just to add, you know, Shaden has shown the growth as a carry jungler to now being a more facilitator, but still showing he can carry at the end of the day. It, it, playing against Shaden, you, you, you're afraid, but at the same time, recently, I'm not more afraid, I'm more concerned about what they're doing with the, the map. Before, so mm -hmm. I'm scared of what Shaden's gonna do to me. Now I'm concerned, okay, my, all my <laughs> laners are going to be disastrous. The jungle, like the, the objectives are gone. I'm more afraid of what he's doing to the map. Yeah, now everybody's paranoid Everyone, on your yeah, team. Yeah, that's right, everyone's paranoid. Because you never know where he's gonna be, you never know how he's gonna play, and you never know if you're going to be able to outhands him as well. Yep. Just it, kind of the all-around package. He had a lot of experience on the LCS stage even last summer, so no surprise there. But let's pull up our Samsung SSD Fast 5 for this season. This is a season-wide Samsung SSD Fast 5. So this is a cumulative stats graphic highlighting some of the coolest and fastest stats that we have. Now, you're two junglers, so I, let's focus on jungle to start things off fastest to level six. Will actually at the top there. Shout out to Will. Yeah, I mean, Will, um, he's always been a player who can play for himself really well. And I think uh, earlier in the split, he must have been playing, uh, I think Brandon was, and he uh, just made sure to full clear, full clear, full clear, and got that really fast 6, 12, uh, level six. Yeah, Perry, what's the craziest thing you're seeing? Anywhere, any lane, any I stat? Mean, Mid lane, Toasty. We got, I gotta highlight Toasty oh, yeah. a little bit. A23 uh, as your first item. I mean, that's that's pretty that's pretty impressive. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, considering his competition is Spyrax and Quant and these other monstrous mid laners, and he's the one capitalizing. 
mm -hmm. I'm getting for Sidem, so. I think Prismal set that fastest kill in like the second week. It, it was oh, pretty yeah. crazy. Oh, yeah. We've had that one for quite a while, so it's incredible that nobody actually took that. I mean, obviously that's just everyone runs out in 5v5 <laughs> fights yeah. in a bridge somewhere. I'm, uh, but it's cool that he, you know, maintained at the top there as well. Yeah, I mean, the quick quick little like shout out for my top winner, Tenacity. He's up okay. there beating yeah. the other top winner playing today by two whole seconds. Okay. You know, he's, he's up there fastest 100. That's yeah. always a fun stat to look at. Yeah, no bias, of course. Yeah. As we see the support there, the brothers of yeah. Sajed. I still got to know what's going on with the mayor. I don't, I don't understand the reference, but we'll have a chat with him. No, yeah, we've got to find out. Yeah, we'll have to. Well, thank you so much, the two of you, for coming out and hanging out with us here for the grand finals. Another split in the books here as it's been a very fun one, very eventful one as well. Make sure to tune in tomorrow for the promotion tournament. But for now, we'll be sending things over to Sneaky Stream. Thanks so much for coming in, everybody. And we'll see you in summer. Love you. Bye, guys. <laughs> I care this. Yeah, all flash, all flashes. Yeah. Okay, stun sky. Out. Oh, Jerry, you're smoking. Wow! Wow, Jerry! That's yeah. right, good job. Yeah, yeah. Not a slow flash, by the way. You can ult him into us, then oh. we just... I don't look, 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 I'm ulted out. I ulted out. Kukasate, Kukasate. Keep going. Can go Nash, maybe? We can keep going, we can keep going. Dead wow. Jet gets an early reset, oh. and Jet rips through the hell bars of Maryville University. That's a quadra kill. Is this going to be a Penta kill? It's no. one. Penta kill for the Jet. Your rookie of the year. Not, not bad for first game on stage. Getting to Jinx Penta. Kill Makai, kill Makai. Kill Makai, kill Makai. Makai first. They're TP, Rumble TP down tower. Kill Makai, kill. Makai first. Kill Makai, kill Makai. We can Baron off it, kill him. Throw, 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 throw. We can go Jinx is here, Jinx is here. I got Braum, I got Braum. Throw, throw. Go Baron, go Baron, go Baron. Go Nash, guys, go Nash. Can we look? I'm walking at them, watch me, watch me. I'm poking him. No, no, no. I have ulti. Look Rumble? No, 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 no. Look Rumble, Rumble. It's good, it's good, it's good. Nice. Look Jace. Look Jace, 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 Go man, go man, go man. Can we end? Can we end? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't give it. Yes. Look around, look around. No, 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 Really throw himself in there as we're ending it now. Zyko. Final engage from Zyko. Oh, Can Scary Jerry Matter. make a miracle happen? It doesn't look like it's a Jet. Untouched Scary Jerry to the back line. The Jet takes him down. Double kill to the rookie of the split. And FlyQuest challengers have done it with wings spread wide. They'll make Saints bow. Well, guys, you want an ACL? Uh, now, now we all go back up and rotting in our place. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, bro. Nice. Nice. Hi, I'm Sasha, I just see us.